Oh my God. Welcome to Hunt Skate Park in Riverside, California, the kind of skate park that will never be built again. This is the first section of the park. It's actually only 8,700 square feet, and they added on, and now the park is 25,000 square feet. But let's take a look at the first part, which is actually older than the second part, but they're both pretty old. It's pretty much just one big bowl section with some random obstacles on the outsides. This ledge actually looks amazing, but I like that some of these older parks have these skateboard obstacle ledges with angle iron on them, but here's the problem. The metal itself just runs out, so if you're grinding, you're just gonna hit the cement patch and stop. This middle section is all wonky. For a pyramid, it's a little steep, but the hubba itself kind of doesn't make any sense, and a flat part up here to get ready to jump onto the hubba, it's way too short. The hubbas themselves are way too short and they're skinny and awkward and they go straight into the cement. And then you have this section. Again, the hubba is made similarly to the other one. It's kind of a complete joke, but the handrail is actually pretty accurate to real life. I feel like a lot of people who learn how to skate this rail could actually take what they learned to a real street handrail. And this outledge right here is just terrifying. These things never really made that much sense to me, especially when they drop off almost head high. But I do kind of like the idea of these ledges on the outskirt. It's just a long, long grind on either side. Kind of a kinky little thing, but seems fun. Let's play with a few things in this section. I'm pretty dead today, to be frank. I'll show the session I had yesterday at the end of this video because it was pretty heated and it's why I'm a little tired. But start here and then we'll look at the rest of the park. <laughs> I can't stay on the ledge because it's so round. So this is the section we just skated, relatively small, and here is the other side. So this rail, which is the thing I'm most excited about skating, leads into the entire other section. This side is much more modern, but still pretty old school. The entire park, I think, was built in 2001, but you got this little whirly do. Got one of these classics. Older skate parks love this obstacle. Of course, this makes me happy, but you have a flat rail and a round rail. Back to back. This thing right here, it's gotta be the thumbnail. I mean, this is a very, very unique obstacle. I'm not really sure what the intention is. Ollie up, hit the top. But if you ollie up, you're gonna lose your foot positioning and then you gotta get all the way up here. Seems so difficult, but definitely is cool. It's just, it's more like a street obstacle, but it's cool. We have this perfect mini ramp in the back. Well, it looks to be perfect, but I like to call them a manual pad. Definitely a cool, unique obstacle here. Very quick foot, you ollie up, you grind the out ledge. Also, you have a good flat ledge here. Very unique. Perfect jersey barrier if you're into this sort of thing. Little kicker ramp in the back. And then you have your classic big section. You have a pyramid next to it, which is cool, but a handrail, six stair, and a hubba. All of these actually look pretty perfect. You have the entire skate park as the run up. This looks pretty fun. I say we test out each little thing, and then we try to find sort of the tricks that we want to do here, even though I'm exhausted. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm gonna save my energy for the, uh, the rail because that seems most fun. I think awkwardly some other people are trying to skate the rail that I want to skate. So the second that he's not skating it, I'm gonna like set my camera up and start skating it. It's just awkward if you have your camera set up filming someone else. It's not usually the most appreciated thing. That's literally the only reason I drove an hour to skate this park. So it's kind of a tough situation where it's like, I can't film until he's done skating it, but I'm gonna skate it.
Fakey 50 Battle of a Lifetime, and that session was super fun because somebody was playing sort of like old school tunes, and it was just like good vibes, lots of support. But the Fakey 50 was a battle, like 40 minutes of attempting. I was terrified the whole beginning, but finally doing that, that was like the main trick that I was hoping to get. The price for the entire park actually ended up being $1.5 million. I don't know if that was for the initial and the second part, but I think that might've just been for the upgrade. You're never gonna see a skate park like this ever again. Even though they built a new section of it, it's still old in comparison to parks today. The parks that are all made today, I made a video about this, are basically Olympic type skate parks. So they're basically obstacles that lead you into being able to compete because we're in the new age and era where skateboarding is just like, any other sport. There's like arenas where you train and then you go to the the bigger arenas and, and do hard tricks in front of crowds. It's very strange, but this park, as you can tell, it's very unique and quirky. And the idea of parks like this were to be built to prepare you for the streets, things that you would find out and about in the streets like handrails and maybe hubba sometimes and rails and things. That's what parks like this are designed for. And parks like this will just never ever look like this ever again. But they're also made out of different materials. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I love the Olympic type of skate parks. I also love skate parks like this, but some of the metal and some of the cracks everywhere, and this is built in an old pool area as well. So it's just a little sketchy and difficult to kind of maneuver around. Even though it has its charm, there are just some things that aren't super practical. Like I don't like the fact that it's gonna be hard for me to smith one of these ledges because of how they build the metal coping. So that being said, skate parks like this still exist everywhere and there's probably no plans on tearing down most of them. So you're gonna have these kind of skate parks for a very long time. So it's cool, we still got them. They're just not building them. I'm glad we were able to muster up enough energy for this session because yesterday at Westchester, like I said, I wanna show you some of my favorite tricks that I did from the session. I was super stoked on how I did the Nolly 180 double flip. I also did a switch backside double flip and I was really proud of that, but the footage came out blurry. It's been an extremely hectic year so far. That's why my uploads have been sporadic. A lot of life stuff came up all at once, like three or four different things. So basically my January has been shot, but just being out here again is amazing. I have been having sessions, but not so much focused on the YouTube videos. I was actually planning on mastering like these 33 tricks I talked about a little bit before. And I went to a skate park and I basically did the 10 rail tricks that I was excited about doing. such a battle just to do these 10 tricks and the goal was to do them on an even harder obstacle that I was like this is super not fun like I don't want to just go to skate parks and practice the same tricks on a continuous basis it's like these Olympic type skate parks are actually inadvertently transforming me into someone who is training more often and I find that not to be quite as fun like today at this skate park has been incredible. So I'm gonna put those kind of sessions in the back burner, even though it did actually get me better at skating, which is great. I think I'm gonna focus right now on just going to any skate park, any street spot, and just having as good of a time, but also pushing myself to do whatever trick sort of matches whatever skate park is in front of me, rather than training on like the six stair, then the seven stair, then the eight stair, like slowly moving up in this strange way. But I don't know, it's all good. And uh, thank you for watching, I'm uploading right now ideally at least once a week. I think I'll throw in a second video here and there. I'm gonna start doing some shorts again just because I have a couple of ideas that just don't make sense for long form YouTube videos. And I just wanna be doing this. The more that life sort of pushed me away from making YouTube videos and skateboarding, the more I was like, oh my God, I miss it so much. I just wanna go outside and film and skate and do the whole thing that I've been doing for a long time now. It's just so fun and I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, progress daily and keep killing it.